Greetings in the name of Christ. My name is Walter Meyer III. Today we will go over the Old Testament reading for Epiphany 5, Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 to 31. This is a longer text, so our goal simply will be to translate the Hebrew. Perhaps there will be time at the end for just a few thoughts concerning a sermon. Let's get started. Verse 21. Hello. The interrogative A with the word for not. So this is a question. The next verb is the verb yada, to know. So putting that together, do you not know? Again, hello here. Now with the verb shama, to hear. Do you not hear? Hello, a third time. Who God is from the verb nagad. This is a hafal, which means then, has it been related? Merosh, a combination of the preposition min with rosh, here meaning from the beginning, the beginning. And then lakem is the preposition with the suffix kem. So putting it all together, has it not been related to you from the beginning? Hala once again. Now, this time with the verb being and a hifil, have you not understood mo sadoth? That's the reading in the Masoretic text with the textual emendation. And check out the apparatus of BHS. I'm going to translate this as from the foundations of the earth. So, have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? Then going to this next line, I'm going to supply the words he is. He is the one sitting, the verb yashav, a participle, on or over chug, the vault haaretz of the earth, wa yosheveha, and its inhabitants. The earth's inhabitants are as chagav, plural, as locusts or as grasshoppers. And then the next portion, ha no te. He is the one stretching out like a curtain, dok, shamayim, the heavens. And then the verb matak. And he has spread them like a tent for dwelling. So he has spread them out the main suffix here referring to the heavens, he has spread them out like a tent, la sheveth, for dwelling. And that's actually the verb yashav, the call infinitive construct. Next portion. He is the one giving, now a literal translation, the verb nathan, participle, rosanim, leaders or rulers, la ayin, for nothing. Now, putting that into more idiomatic English, he is the one making rulers as nothing. Shofite Eretz, judges of the earth, kathohu, like emptiness. Thohu is that word that we see in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, and then the verb asa, he has made. He has made judges of the earth as emptiness. Next line. Af can be translated as indeed. And ball is a word meaning not. It's a word that has a negative connotation. Then the verb nata. That means to plant. This is a nifal, a nifal perfect. So putting that all together. Indeed, they have not been planted. Af once again. Ball once again. Now the verb is zara. This is actually a pu'al perfect, so the passive sense. Indeed, they have not been sown. And then af ball again. Now, show resh here is a po'al perfect, means to take root, ba'aretz in the earth. And actually now we have the subject, gizam, so the noun gaza with the meme suffix. Their stem has not taken root in the earth. 
Wagam. And also Nashaf, that means to blow. He has blown Bahem on them, and they dry up. The verb Yavash. Now the noun Sa'ara is like a tempest or a storm wind. The noun Kash is stubble with the preposition Ka in front of it. And then the verb Nasa. Uh, this is an imperfect third feminine singular with the name suffix. And a storm wind lifts them up like stubble or lifts them up, uh, carries them away like stubble. All right, now the next portion. L is the preposition, and to whom, in the verb dama, will you liken me, the ni suffix there, and to whom will you liken me, and we will be alike. We will be similar. That's the verb shawa. Says yomar kadosh. I'm going to supply some words here for a full translation. Says the holy one. And of course, that's a reference to Yahweh. Sa'u so, is the imperative of Nasa. Lift Marom on high, Ene cam your eyes, U ra'u and see. Mi vara ela, who created these? And then the next portion, ha motzi, the one, and then to the verb yatsa, this is a hyphial participle of the verb yatsa. The one bringing out ba mispar by number their host. So it's sava with the main suffix, their host. Lech kulam, uh, literally to all of them, bishim by name, yikra, he calls. He calls all of them by name. Mero, from abundance of onim. I'm going to translate that as vigor. And because he is mighty, amitz koach, in strength, literally, a man is not nedar, uh, ne nedar, is not missing. A man is not missing. Uh, a little smoother would be, not one is missing. All right, please lift the screen. Continuing, lama is why, thomar, the verb amar to say, Yaakov, why do you say, O Jacob, and then the verb davar, speak, O Israel, and now here is what Jacob and Jacob slash Israel was saying, the verb sathar, uh, this is a nifal, so the passive sense, the subject is darki. My way is hidden or has been hidden, me Yahweh, from Yahweh, u me Elohai, and from my God, mishpati, my justice, my just cause, passes by or passes away. Now the verb avar here. Next portion, halo. So again, as we had at the beginning, the interrogative hey on lo, and now the verb yada. Do you not know? Im can be used sometimes as an interrogative particle. Have you not heard? So the verb shama. Elohe olam, a god of eternity is Yahweh. Yahweh is a god of eternity. Or you could say Yahweh is the eternal God. Bore, so the verb bara to create the participle. And so this could be, you know, the creating katsoth haaretz, the ends of the earth. Or you could say the creator of the ends of the earth. Now the verb yaaf, and we're going to have this verb repeated as we go to the rest of the pericope. That means to... Uh, be faint, to grow faint. He does not grow faint. And now the verb yaga, we're going to have that one repeated as well. 
he does not grow weary. Ein cheker. A cheker means searching. There is not searching to tevu natho, to his understanding. There is no searching his understanding. Or another way to say it, his understanding is unsearchable. Nothain, the participle of Nathan. Uh, he is the one giving la ya'ef to the faint koach strength. U la'ain onim, and again that word translated again as vigor. And to the one without vigor, yarba. He multiplies or he increases atzma, might. Power. Now this line, beginning with again the verb ya'af, and the subject is na'arim. Uh, young men will faint, and yaga, and they will grow weary, and use bacharim, kashal, uh, is the verb here. First of all, the call, infinitive, absolute. Then the same verb is repeated. It's an imperfect third masculine plural. Interestingly enough, it's a nifal. Usually, you know, we'd expect here a call as well to match the infinitive absolute. But the nifal of this verb in this context has the same meaning as the call. Now, this construction with the infinitive absolute is emphatic. And that has the sense, they certainly will stumble. And so putting that together with bachurim, and young men certainly will stumble. And now the last portion. I'm translating the wow here as but. And now the verb is kawa, and this is a participle, a masculine plural construct. But those waiting on Yahweh, and then the verb halaf, this is a hifil, and it's an imperfect and it's a third masculine plural, they will renew koach, strength. And then the verb Allah, they will go up. Aver means wing or pinion. I'm going to add a preposition on, and I'm going to see this as a collective, in other words, singular in form, but plural in meaning. They will go up on wings, ka-nesharim, like eagles. The verb roots, they will run, and, and then the verb yaga, they will not grow weary, ye laku, from the verb halak, they will walk, and they will not, and then the verb again, yaaf, and they will not faint. All right. Well, thus far, the Hebrew text. Now, just a few thoughts with regard to a sermon. This is a strong gospel passage bringing out a word of comfort to those who are weary, to those who feel faint because of the troubles, tribulations, trials of this life, because of the various problems in this life. And they realize they can't make it on their own. But those who wait on the Lord, and that's a reference to believers, they have been brought to faith in the one true God. They hold to his word and the promises of his word. And so holding to his word, they wait for the Lord. And he will indeed deliver them. He will help them with their physical adversities according to his will and timetable. And he certainly will help them with regard to spiritual challenges. And he will renew them. He will renew their strength through his word and sacrament. He will give them that spiritual refreshment so they can keep moving forward with energy, with this spiritual vigor from the Lord. And all this is possible, of course, because of the saving work of Jesus Christ, his life, death, and resurrection. And because of Christ and because of the grace of God, these people then are rescued by the Lord. And so he helps them through this life. They go on with energy, with vigor, and they engage in triumphant living by the grace and power of God. 
They are, as Paul writes, more than conquerors through him who loved them. And so God will give them victory through this life in the name of Jesus. And then at last he will take them home to heaven. So all this is a word of comfort coming from God who is the creator, God who is the almighty one, God who controls this universe, God whose understanding is unsearchable, who knows everything, who knows each of his people by name and loves them dearly and will act on their behalf. May God bless your meditation and your use of this text in a sermon in a Bible class. The Lord be with you.